Welcome to Electron Online. One of the most difficult parts of doing projectile problems is the ones where they ask you what is the angle at which you need to fire a projectile such that it lands at a particular distance. And they also usually give you the initial velocity. Now you'll see why that is a difficult problem. And secondly, we're going to start with a simpler case where the projectile starts from the ground and ends on the ground. It starts and ends at the same height. We're next going to do a projectile problem where it starts at a different height and those problems are even more difficult. All right, let's start with this case where we're trying to find the angle required such that if a projectile is fired with an initial velocity of V sub naught, it will reach a distance of X. So you can see here that this is simply going to be the general case. We're going to develop the equation and then afterwards we're going to show you an example. How do we start? The best way to start is like we always start projectile problems. We're trying to find time in the air for both the y direction and the x direction. And then we'll solve that simultaneously. So watch and see how that works. So time in the air. First, we're going to do the y direction. So we take our equation y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time plus one half g t squared. Well, which means if we're going to do this both in the x and the y direction, time in the x direction. Now, of course, in the x direction, we don't have an acceleration, and we can assume that the initial distance is going to be x sub naught, which is going to be zero. So the equation simplifies to x is equal to v initial in the x direction times time. We only get that middle term. We can cancel out the first and the third term in that equation. Now, to do this problem, we're going to need both the x and the y component of that initial velocity. In the y direction, now notice this is going to be the angle theta, so in the y direction, this is v initial in the y direction equals v initial times the sine of theta, and in the x direction, we have v initial in the x direction is equal to v initial times the cosine of the angle theta. All right, now we're ready to plug those numbers, well, not really the numbers, the variables, into our equation. Luckily here, the final height and the initial height will be zero, which of course will simplify the equation. We start at zero height, we end at zero height, so we get zero equals zero, plus v initial in the y direction is going to be this, v initial times the sine of theta times t, and now here, we realize that g in projectile motion is a minus 9.8 meters per second squared. So what we're going to do here is take that negative, make this a negative, one-half g t squared. But now we realize that this g now represents a positive 9.8. So we'll put that in here somewhere. So g equals a positive 9.8 meters per second squared because we're already taking taken the negative sign of that typical minus 9.8 meters per second squared. We need to do that, otherwise we have difficulty making the equations work out. Now here, we can write that x is equal to v initial in the x direction, which is v initial times the cosine of theta times t. And now we're going to solve those two equations simultaneously. And we're going to do that by eliminating the one variable we don't know, which is time. So we're going to solve this equation for time and plug that into t here and t squared here to eliminate the variable t. So here we're going to write t is equal to x divided by v sub naught times the cosine of theta. And this is what we're going to plug in here and here. So now we get 0 is equal to v initial times the sine of theta times t, which is equal to this. So we write x divided by v initial times the cosine of theta minus one half g times t squared. So here we get x squared divided by v sub naught squared times the cosine square of theta. And let me put a line here so you can see that those are not part of the same equation. All right, now we can do a little bit of simplification. We have v sub naught here and v sub naught there. And Wow, that looks like it so far. So let me rewrite the equation with a simplified form here. We get 0 is equal to sine of theta 
divided by the cosine of theta times x. And here we get in the numerator minus gx squared divided by, and in the denominator we get 2 v sub naught squared cosine squared of theta. All right, we can do one more simplification. We have an x in this term and an x squared here. We have a 0 on the left side, so we can divide both sides by x. So this x disappears, and this becomes an x to the first power instead of an x to the second power. Now we need to find a way to solve this equation for theta. And the trick here is to say, well, let's multiply both sides of the equation by the cosine square of theta. So we're going to multiply this side, the so left side and the right side, by the cosine square of theta. Now, of course, the left side is 0, so nothing changes there. On the right side, we now get 0 is equal to, here we have the sine of theta times the cosine of theta, minus, and here the cosine square of theta are going to cancel out. We end up with gx over 2v sub naught squared. Now, once you have the equation in this format, now you can fairly easily solve for theta. We need to do one more thing. We need to use the trigonometric identity here, where the sine of theta times the cosine of theta, we can use the angle addition, and but that means that we now end up with, this can now be written as 0 equals 1 half the sine of 2 theta. And still, we have minus g x divided by 2v sub naught squared. Now again, we're going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the 1 halves. And then we're going to separate these two. So we write sine of 2 theta is equal to gx over v sub naught squared. Because if I bring this across, that becomes negative, get rid of the negatives. Now we use the identity that 2 theta is equal to the arc sine of g x over v sub naught squared. And I um, should leave a little bit more room there. All right, so now what this means is if two, 2 theta is equal to this, that means theta is equal to half the arc sine of g x over v sub naught squared. And that is the ultimate equation we're looking for. We were looking for an equation that would give us the angle required for the projectile to reach the distance of x if the initial velocity of the projectile is v sub naught. And again, we realize that we start at zero height and end at zero height, which makes the equation a little bit easier to solve. And that's the equation you want to find. So all you need to do now is plug in an x, plug in initial velocity, and take the arc sine of that times one half, and you get the initial angle of that projectile. And that's how it's done. So let me move over here a little bit. You can take a look at how that equation was developed. Again, solve for the time in the air for both the x and the y direction, then solve the, this equation for time, plug that into this equation, you eliminate time, and then through a series of steps, you find the angle. That's how it's done.